For the past uh, 10 years, I've been interested in machines which for me seem to have been overlooked by many people even though they abound all over our culture, such as gumball machines, pinball machines, gambling machines, any machine which uh, attracts us and may even repel us through various stages of our relationship to it. Uh, for me, a gumball machine is a very beautiful object and represents a subject matter which hadn't been dealt with very much. The other problem that I'm interested in is the relationship of man to his food, as he has been throughout a long period of time, and how, uh, how food uh, changes over the years. If you look at a still life by an early master, the food is completely different, whether it's a pie or a melon, or in this case, or whatever. What interested me in this particular composition is to have a natural object which has been interfered with, cut by man, also in serial form, that's to say lots of them put together to form an interesting kind of compositional analysis. We're talking with Wayne Tebow, a Sacramento artist, presently featured in an issue of Time magazine and a leading exponent of pop art. Do you resent that term, pop art, Mr. Tebow? No, I don't resent it. It's simply a term which is handy to describe a any kind of body of work, but I think art by its nature is anti-categorical and the painter is often not concerned with those kind of terms or names. What does pop art really mean? It's a name coined by the British critic Lawrence Alloway to describe the uses made by artists of popularly derived materials such as billboard advertising, television sequences, uh, and the like. How is this kind of art different from the kind of art that we know represented the Renaissance or Impressionistic art? It, it seems much different on the surface, is it really? I don't think it's any different at all. At least, certainly, I don't consider myself to be different from or outside of the mainstream of, of uh, the history of painting. I find myself to be a very traditional artist in the sense that I'm facing, I feel I'm facing the same problems and uh, influenced greatly by uh, so many artists, so many painters, that I couldn't identify them all. So I think when an artist has that close feeling and, and uh, very positive feeling about historical consequences, he is not different at all, except as maybe a point of emphasis from the original kind of painting. But your subject matter certainly is different, isn't it? Yes, in a way it's different, although still life material has been uh, a continuing tradition in the Western still life for a great number of years. Uh, it's simply that the things we use today are different. Uh, Chardin, when he painted copper pots or clay pipes, those were very commonplace objects. And he was doing sort of kitchen spectacles. And people decried his subject matter, saying that it wasn't uh, legit, you know, it didn't have the old stuff of the salon painters. But Chardin was able to transcend those commonplace objects and put them into a composition and make them enhanced enough so that they were imbued with a very special kind of beauty, regardless of what they were. And in this sense, it's, the, it's a continuing concern, I think, of any painter to be interested in that kind of, of direction. There certainly is a controversy going on in America today over pop art. Some people attack it violently as being completely untraditional, and some people really like it. How do you account for this tremendous interest in the kind of art you're painting? I really can't account for the interest. I wonder about that myself. I know that uh, not only nationally but internationally now, pop artists uh, are exhibiting all over the world. There's an exhibition in, in South America, an exhibition at the Institute of Contemporary Art in Great Britain, and on and on and on. Uh, I think probably the interest develops out of the, the provoking nature of having suddenly something seem like something that it isn't. That is to say, people are so used to advertising that when they see a, a, a painting of a piece of pie, there's a kind of instantaneous relationship between it and an ad, or an it and an advertised uh, glorified kind of uh, presentation. I think this is always the kind of outrage of the public, uh, if we can find a public, the reaction to being 
fooled or duped. Uh, all of us, none of us like to be fooled or feel like we're being taken advantage of. So generally it's a matter of a kind of, of extension of prejudice, a matter of continuing confrontation of what is art and what isn't art. And I think this is, again, one of the great interests of, uh, of the contemporary painting. Thanks very much for being our guest today. It's a pleasure.